Oi. I'm I'm not supposed to be on yet. No. Quit it. A lab goblin has supported you. <laughs> Stop that. Quit it. <coughs> I'm not even supposed to be on yet. Y'all hang tight. No, wait, where did you find that train whistle? I thought I had packed it away. Why, where, no. Give, give me, give. No, give, give, give. Give me the damn train whistle. <laughs> Me oh, fine. Fine. Hi. Hi. Hello. We're back. Yes. Hi. Chew thing is happening. Hopefully y'all can hear me. Um, let me get captions going. Testing, testing. There we go. Captions should be running now. Hi, Toaster. Hi, Lily. Uh, hi, Catherine. Hi, Steph. God, we're already at level two. Um, unnecessary. Hi. Welcome. Um, <laughs> thank you, Lily. Um, yeah, so I guess we're doing this first. Um, you would think I'm used to it by now, but it's been a while since I've been uh, on the stream. I did not say send train whistles, NASA boy. No, absolutely not. The, the lab, the new lab actually does need a few things. Train whistles aren't among them. We we don't need train whistles. We're good. Hi, Curious. Welcome on in. Wait, no, we're not. Haha, -ha, I don't think that command works anymore. Hold on. I'm actually curious now. Stand by. Did I turn that off? I might have. No, it's it's night by having a moment. Stand by. It should work. Our alerts just off. They shouldn't be, but they may also not be working right now. Hi, Hale. Hi, Reese. I mean, the only way, God, I hate to phrase it like this. The only way to check to see if alerts are working is to do something that would trigger an alert. So if they're not working, I may, I may have to troubleshoot. Hey, bare hands. Welcome on in. No, it's still not working, huh? That is so weird. You heard him. I no, 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 no. Okay. So, God. Yes. Alert, alerts are working. Thank you, Lily. Thank you, Hale. It's good to be back. Not much has changed, clearly. I mean, we moved across country and we've been through a lot. Don't get me wrong, but clearly not much has changed. Brian. <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Yeah, uh, Nightbot's not working for some reason. Uh, stand by. I'm gonna join the channel. Hi, Toaster. Oh my God, no, you do not have to chew until Nightbot wakes up. Look, the, the subs bar is all, already halfway full. Stand by. There we go. Now it should be working. Oh God, thank you, NASA. Okay, so Nightbot does not have a sub. I'll have to fix that after stream. No, no, no. I didn't say only half full, Brian. I said it's already halfway full. Oh God, thank you, Toaster. Lemur, welcome on in. What is happening? Thank you, Toaster. <laughs> Shit, the to <sighs> Yep, it's that time again. Hi, fool. Hi, gelatinous. Hi, banana. I have ESP. 
Emotional support pumpkin was one of the first things I unpacked. <laughs> and so here you go. Emotional support chew? No, that's not a thing. We're not making it a thing. Absolutely not. Welcome on in. Uh, do let me know how volume is on, on music and my voice. Um, I had to change a few things around from the previous setup. So I'm still fine tuning things. So if anything is off, my apologies. Uh, I'll try to get it fixed as quickly as possible. Don, we now are called. Oh God, that's going to be stuck in my head now. Yes, there's a cult meeting happening. Don't look at me. I don't have a cult. This is very much on y'all. This is like, I guess your, your group project. Uh, I don't know the ins and outs of said cult again. I don't know what the paraphernalia consists of. I don't know what the pageantry is. I don't know what's happening. Sounds good. Excellent. <laughs> but did you stuff? Because that seems like a choice. Wow. Are we busting out Age of Aquarius, Brian? Wow. <laughs> Cult of the Law is now in session. Oh, God. Ah. <sighs> You know, it doesn't help that Punkle Nix, one of the first things he did upon arriving here was present me with a, a little llama planter that now has a cactus in it that was wearing a Mjolnir pendant. So I will never be free of llamas. That llama is now stationed near our front door to judge any all and sentry who come into our domicile. Oh, Jesus Christ. Double llama. Yeah, great. I get llama in stereo. That's awesome. <laughs> so there you have it. We're in a new state. We're in a new time zone. And yet nothing has changed. We're, we're culting gelatinous. Evidently, there's a cult meeting happening with the chew in the background. Two and minutes left. Stop, you. stop that. And then once that's done, we'll get through some announcements. We're going to talk a little bit and then uh, we've got something fun. I've been looking forward to this one for a long time. It will I change a good thing. Is it though? Is it? This is debatable. Oh gosh. I want to crochet you a llama. I just need to find a better like, do not feel that you have to make me anything llama related. Catherine will only use it as a cudgel against me. All you're doing is you're not crafting anything for me. You're crafting something for her to use against me. Oh, the lab has received additional coffee funding. thank you, Lily. Aha, it did not snipe the timer. It did not snipe the timer. Be happy I didn't uh, look up that llama poly pocket. No. One minute so left on quit that. There's a llama Polly Pocket? Uh, first of all, Polly Pocket's still a thing? Because if it is, fantastic. But also, I call bullshit because Mighty Max certainly isn't a thing anymore. And I mean also the cartoon. Because the cartoon was badass. They're different than you remember? If you did, I, I totally spaced this, F, and I'm so sorry. Y'all, these past two weeks have been exhausting there has been a lot we're gonna talk a little bit about that um but if i have been slow to respond to anything if i have been remiss in um replying to any messages or anything like that that's that's literally why because this the past two weeks have been an absolute marathon for us of the move unpacking setting up the new place getting into the swing of things and it's been a lot the cartoon was amazing. Come on. You had Tim Curry as Skullmaster and Richard Maul as the Barbarian dude. That was fantastic. Llama Parade, Llama Parade. Oh, God. thank you all so much for that hype train. Now I've got Llama versions of um, certain classic tunes stuck in my head. So that's rad. Uh, what say we get through some announcements, huh? I'm not even going to ask permission. I'm just going to do it. So first and foremost, exclamation mark pronouns. Pronouns are not native to Twitch chat yet. Hopefully one day they will be. Uh, that's going to show you three links 
Um, the first one allows you to attach your account, set your pronouns. The other two are for Firefox and Chrome. Also works on Opera. Allows you to see the pronouns of anyone using this extension. It's completely free. Takes half a minute to set up. Makes me feel better about my space. So thank you to everyone who's already running that. Uh, sweet, Steph. I will I will check at break, most likely. Uh, next up, exclamation mark, Die Hard, who is the, the lovely group of folks that I'm making something for today. Uh, that is going to show you uh, my link and code to get 10% off your order at dieharddice.com. I am an affiliate for them. Next up is exclamation mark Talon for Talon and Claw, makers of fine handcrafted wood accessories. Now featuring uh, several more of my designs. Be sure to go check them out. That's going to get you 10% off your order at their Etsy shop. And last but certainly not least, exclamation mark familiar for found familiar coffee, which has been saving our asses lately. We managed to score uh, an order of found familiar just before we moved. And it has made our mo mornings that much more pleasant while we work through all this stuff here. Um, that's going to show you my code and affiliate link to get a discount off your order. Please go support small businesses like this. It's greatly appreciated. Sam, welcome on in. And Sam made me a hat, y'all. I'm not wearing it currently, uh, but Sam made me an amazing flat cap. It's got gears on it and a big seal um drawn on the inner uh, brim and it's absolutely lovely uh and i finally got to meet sam in person and it was lovely found familiar is hands down again even if i was not an affiliate they would still be my favorite co coffee company period uh we recently got to try their uh good berry we were just looking for something different to try so i was like yeah we'll try the good berry normally we just do cartographers blend thieves camp that sort of thing the good berry y'all Holy shit, that stuff is good. No pun intended. It is delicious. And I made Katie, uh, sorry, my bad. I made Catherine promise that whenever their Meta Magic comes in, because Meta Magic's a seasonal blend, that we pick some of that up. Because that's their Sumatran blend, and Sumatran is my top tier favorite coffee. Hey, Sly. Um, but yeah, let's talk a little bit about the move. Um it's it's amusing to me and it's something i just wanted to point out because in the weeks leading up to our move whenever the the topic of discussion would come up and we'd be telling someone in colorado that we were moving to illinois um i can count the number of times that people said something positive initially on one hand and still have fingers left over most of the time it was Ooh, that's going to be really boring. Or, ooh, that's a lot of corn. Or, ooh, I hope you can deal with the humidity. And I just thought that was interesting that the majority of people's reactions whenever you're saying you're moving somewhere is to find something to dislike. Like, this person's about to make a huge move. They've already got enough stressors on their plate. But we add to that by saying, oh, I hope you I hope you don't mind humidity. Or, I hope you won't mind this. Or mind that. And it's it's telling. Instead of just saying, uh, wow, I'm really excited for you. I hope the move goes smoothly and all that stuff. We segue directly into negativity. And I understand it, but at the same time, I think that's something all of us could be a little bit more mindful of going forward when anyone's excited about something going on or something, um, a new chapter in their life and things like that. Um, because I promise you, two or one of us, this is shit we've already thought about. And incidentally, for the people out there who are like, oh, I hope you can deal with humidity. We used to live in Houston, Texas. All right. If you've never been, shut up. Because <laughs> the only place in the contiguous United States of America that I've been to that is more humid on average than Houston, Texas is New Orleans. Just saying. Uh, for me, it was about snow in Duluth. Yeah, it's, it's, oh God, hi. Hey, Phoenix. Hey, we got to meet Phoenix too. And that was absolutely lovely. Yeah, but yeah, more joy, less negativity. And the other thing was, um, and I chalked this one up to people not having traveled extensively, not taking many car trips. Um, because we had a, a slew of people saying, oh man, that drive is just so boring from Colorado to where we are in Illinois. Um, no, it's not. No, it's it's not. Are there a lot of cornfields? Yeah, but there's also 
great sweeping hills with graveyards on top of them. There were crop dusters um, that were doing ballet arcs right over the roadway where it looks like they were making an attack run on us. There were just wonderful outcroppings and deep, dense forests all along the way. We got to cross um, the uh, Pawnee Prairie uh, Reserve and it's gorgeous grasslands out there. So to those people who want to talk about boring trips, I get it. I mean, we've driven through Kansas in the winter and there's no, I, there's just no, no way around that. It, it sucks. But I think half of it is just how you look at things, because I got to be honest with you. Some of the just geography and the things that I was seeing were, were giving me wonderful story ideas and wonderful location ideas. It's, it's just kind of how you look at stuff. In descending order of humidity, Nala, Houston, Jim, Bob's, Pitts, Orlando. Yes. Uh, thank you, Phoenix. I absolutely lo love road trips. I've The only one I made, which was a slog, was, again, when we had to go through Kansas in winter. Not Kansas's fault, necessarily. It's winter, and Kansas is very, very flat. Um, and nothing is growing during winter. So as far as the eye can see, it's lightly dusted snow fields the occasional windmill that's not moving, and billboards for meth addiction. So, yeah. There's a statement to be made in there somewhere. I don't know what it is. We'll find it later. Hey, Anda! I've hitchhiked through Kansas in the summer. I have opinions. Yes, it's not not that much, much more pleasant in the summer. However, you know, you can find vignettes here and there. Uh, out west was only rough because this is between gas stations. Oh, I can believe it. I can believe it. But we're here. Um, I, I want to apologize again that I did not return to streams on Monday. Uh, for those of you who might have missed the post, this move in particular was very, very brutal on us. Um, not because just the amount of stuff we had to move, but the amount of stuff that we had to build when we got here. Um, building a bunch of bookcases, building uh, Catherine's desk, building out the desks in the lab, all that stuff. And along the way, uh, I got a bruised bone in my shin, um, an injured wrist, a sprained thumb, which that was a new one by me, um, and a pinched nerve in my hip. So through it all, it was basically moving at the speed of smell. And... It took much longer for us this time to get everything set up and unpacked and all that than it normally would have. Yeah, so much furniture in boxes. Sam knows all the stuff we got delivered. I had to put together an entire couch, which was a new one for me. I've never built a couch and now I have. Um, let's see. One, two. I'm counting in my head. Sorry. Three, four, five, five bookshelves. Um, four desks. And then we had to pick up a dining table and a washer and dryer. So needless to say, I was I was hurting. <laughs> I like to think myself decently in shape, but I was hurting. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even know you could sprain your thumb. So that was definitely a new one by me. There's always something uh, with moving, I swear. It's the only constant in the universe. I hear that, Commander. It's just normally for us, it goes very, very quickly. We've done this song and dance so many damn times. It's what we did not count on this time was that between the last time we moved and now in our little hobbit hole in Colorado, we had accumulated way more stuff. I mean, the last time I moved, I did not have the lab. So, oh, we got a raid. We got a raid. Welcome on in. Cheers. I did it doing the grocery bag, Harry. Oh, no. Thank you so much, Cheers. Welcome on uh, in, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Zero Reynolds, a.k.a. Uh, Artificer Industries. I'm your friendly neighborhood artificer. Um, author, artist, maker, TTRPG content creator, sometimes variety streamer, um, ambient story coffee vessel, coffee goblin, and me popsicle. Oh, thank you so much, Phoenix. Oh, shit. Uh, we're over halfway on subs and uh, uh, over halfway on the bits. Thank you. Um, speaking of which, I would like to address that real quick. Um, first of all, thank you so much for the support. Uh, secondly, um, I wanted to set up some kind of bar because Catherine and I need new bicycles. We don't own a car. Um, 
but I did not want to put up some kind of crowdfunding so soon after we did, we had to crowdfund our entire move. So I'm, I'm kind of torn right now. I will tell you all, uh, particularly if you are subbed here, throwing bits here, or if you're a supporter of mine on Patreon, just because I like to be transparent, the, the bulk of the money I make through the end of this month is going to go towards getting Catherine and I new bikes. We're okay otherwise, so don't worry about that. I just, I want people to know where their support is going. So we're going to be picking up new bikes, hopefully. So uh, all the contributions and support that y'all do over these next couple of weeks is going to go towards that. Hey, Sarah, welcome in. We were just discussing the move and uh, setting up shop here in the lab. Hopefully you are doing well. Am I out? I am out of energy drink. Oh, well, LaCroix it is. Just in time for fall. Fall-ish. I We don't know how early fall hits here. Um, so, who knows? I will tell you that uh, the summer here is already way milder than where we lived because we are no longer a mile closer to the sun. So, that's fun. <laughs> We can actually go out and enjoy summer a little bit more, which is weird, again, because we have humidity. But no, uh, we actually can go out and it doesn't immediately start pounding us into the pavement. Immediate improvement. Oh, oh, and if you missed it, if you missed the pictures, the wildest surprise that we got, we pretty much had to rent this house sight unseen. Um... They had a few pictures of it uh, online, so we knew basically what we were getting into. And all we knew was it had a two car, two car garage, right? I'm really excited for that because that means I can go out there and do all my rattle can priming. If I'm working with caustic stuff, I can just do it out there. Perfect, right? Sam is here. And at the time, Catherine and Nick's had gone uh, off to uh, Walmart to pick up some groceries and whatnot for the house. So I'm like, okay, let's check out the garage. I want to see what I'm working with here. We walk into the garage, turn on the lights, and there's three full built-in work, work tables. There is storage everywhere. There's overhead lights for those workstations. It is a full-blown surprise workshop in this space that I had no idea was there. The, the joy squeal that I unleashed uh, probably awoken, awaked, woken, awaked, woke up, woke up dogs at least four counties away. It's so cool. And Catherine and I are already thinking about um, how to rig things up to do an eventual future stream out there for one of my larger prop builds or, or things like that. So I can walk y'all through more of the process than I can necessarily here on my, my, I mean, my workspace has grown significantly compared to what I used to have to use, but it's still not big enough for say things like prop weapons and whatnot. I really need to do it out there. The plugs available, right, Sam? It was amazing. Uh, the only thing I still have to do out there is that there is a fine layer of uh, history, aka dust, over everything. So I need to get that space cleaned up and then uh, start going to work. I can already tell y'all that I have a giant sheet of XPS foam out there right now uh, that we picked up from Lowe's because we still had the moving truck and we're like, fuck it, more material. I, I need it for streams. Hey, Nix! So many plugs. Again, Nix, anytime you need, anytime you want. My workshop, your workshop. Anytime. No, not forbidden snacks. We're not eating the XPS foam. The XPS foam, especially the stuff I'm going to be using today, is not for eating. The stuff I'm using for today is too expensive to eat. So if we're going all the other reasons why you should not eat XPS foam, you're not eating this stuff because it's from Black Magic Craft and it's pricey as fuck. Do not. <laughs> but yeah, if for whatever reason, over the past few weeks, you've missed any of the announcements, if you missed Patreon posts, anything like that, uh, just as a reminder going forward, I am back to effectively full-time streaming here on Twitch. So I'm going to be streaming Monday through Friday. Uh, Monday through Thursday will always be at 2 p.m. Central. And then Fridays, we're kicking off 
uh, at noon now uh, with uh, noon central with the artificer chat and then following the artificer chat we'll be playing some games uh likely these days it's going to be Baldur's Gate 3 because that has become my whole personality so Mervin welcome in no not gourmet forbidden snacks absolutely not Mervin I have mint and I'm not afraid to use it <laughs> <clears throat> so let's talk a second about this build that we're getting into today because I've been talking y'all's ear off enough. Um, this all started. We're building something for Die Hard Dice today. Uh, but more importantly, it's something that one of you watching right now might be able to get your hands on. Uh, this all started ages ago when I had made a tweet back when it was still called Twitter um about in the future i would like to get my hands on some unpainted stuff from dwarven forge uh just to maybe show people how to paint uh this kind of pre-done terrain material this pre-done modular terrain material that and their shit is gorgeous right um so out of the blue my contact at diehard says would you like some we have this stuff sitting around the warehouse. Would you like some? Yes. Yes, please. And thank you. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm when I agreed at the time, I'm imagining that they're going to send me one of the little kits that you can buy from Dwarven Forge, right? I mean, this stuff is not expensive, but it's not necessarily cheap. Um, <laughs> they proceed to send me uh, a box which is larger than the the cutting mat I'm looking at right now which is 18 by 24 inches it is a giant box of stuff from Dwarven Forge oh right yep stand by there we go cool sorry about that Mervin I had meant to do that before stream and totally spaced it so it was huge and heavy because Dwarven Forge stuff is no joke. Uh, I was expecting them to send me like a little cavern set. And no, they ended up sending like the entirety of Carlsbad Caverns to me. So full disclosure, I kept what I needed for this build and a little bit extra. But I don't need all that Dwarven Forge laying around. I mean, let's face it, I make my own stuff. So I donated the remainder of that Dwarven Forge stuff to our friends in Colorado who are running a home game and have no terrain whatsoever. They have a child and they don't have the time to make any terrain. So I'm like, y'all can actually use this. Please use it. Um, hey, no worries, Lemur. Hey, Terraintronics. Oh God, yes. So Terraintronics, a Conway castle is getting used in this build. We're gonna be running uh, four lights, which we'll talk about here shortly, but that's actually part of the challenge I set for myself with this build. Um, but shortly, getting back to the story, shortly after these pieces from Dwarven Forge arrived, Die Hard reaches out to me and says, uh, hey, how would you like to do a collaboration build on this? I'm like, y'all mailed this to me for absolutely free, 100%. Yes, I, I would love to do this. So the plan is that I am going to paint up these pieces, which I'll show you shortly, and that they are going to craft a set of dice that goes along specifically with this set, which gave me a, a pretty interesting challenge. So they didn't set it. I set this one for myself because I want this piece not only to be playable terrain for whomever it goes to and also allow them to connect other Dwarven Forge pieces to it still. But I wanted to create something that also works as a standalone dice display for the for this one of a kind set of dice that Die Hard is making. And once that's all done, this is what I'm really excited about. Someone's going to win it. The whole kit and caboodle. They're going to win this creation that comes out of my lab and they're going to win that uh lovely set of dice from Die Hard. I'll have more details about that for y'all soon, but that's the plan right now and I'm really excited. So let me go ahead and switch over to the uh, crafting camp and I will show you what we are working with. So here we are. Hey, check it out, y'all. 
I finally got my fancy camera working. The setup. Thank you all again so much for making that one possible because it is really nice to have. So here's what we're working with so far. They sent me um, a cavern set and a dungeon set. I wanted to focus on the cavern set and their idea, gonna be using these larger pieces here, is I'm going to create a two tiered cavern set like so. Now you may notice that there's some holes in this already. Here, yeah, you can see that hole right there. That's because they want me to paint this up in fluorescent colors and have them be reactive to UV light. And it just so happens. <laughs> this is the part I'm real excited about. Come on, you. Open says me. And I have these lovely little UV LEDs. So these are going to be sitting in the environments, which will react to this bright as shit fluorescent paint that I have from Vallejo. And we're going to run the entire assembly off a Conwy castle from Terrain Triangle. Y'all see me use this in the past. It's one of my favorite go-to uh, boards for just setting up quick LEDs, usually in a series of four. And that is all going to be put grab it the uh, wires housing and everything else is going to be put into this block of xps foam now mind you this is the good stuff the very high psi xps foam that i got from black magic craft store this housing is going to go on the back of this assemblage we're going to make sure that everything is all tied up neatly we're going to carve it to resemble this outer rocky texture but all these pieces in particular are going to be glued together. We are going to bust out some green stuff to close up the seams and we're going to do some sculpting with that. And then once all of this is of a piece, we'll be able to prime it, get to painting, add our wires, add our lights, uh, tie everything up with some uh, flocking and other goodies. So this is going to be like several streams, just a heads up. We're going to be working on this one for a bit. But I decided, hey, Sirius, welcome on in. Yeah, shout out for Sirius, please. I decided uh, that today, at least, it's all about just the first stages. We're getting our pieces together. We're getting them all glued up. And then uh, hopefully we'll get rid of the seams. We'll see how far we get today. And then once that's all said and done, um, there will be parts of this that I will be doing off stream. And that's just for... Uh, time sake because Die Hard does need this by uh, the end of the month, early September. So anytime that I do something off stream and we come back, I promise that I'll point out what I did. I will tell you how I did it. And I will tell you what tools I used because if nothing else, I want this build to show folks, even if you cannot make your own terrain, you can make something cool out of, you know, pre-done terrain like this, 100%. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I've got to do is because I did drill these holes, I have these channels that I've already cut. Now, um, Dwarven Forge plastic is pretty hardcore, but it's still a relatively soft plastic. So for those of you at home who may want to drill or alter uh, your Dwarven Forge, I was able to do it very easily and very safely with my Dremel tool and a cutting head and a standard um, drill. So it was very, very simple stuff. But what I gotta do now is because I want all my lights to run back to this point where our foam housing is gonna live, I wanna go ahead and sand down these cuts I made a little bit more just because I don't want any possibility if there's a wire that moves to snag on anything or tear the wire. I'm usually pretty good about gluing down my wires, but just in case because this thing does have to get mailed somewhere, and let's face it, the people handling our packages aren't exactly always the uh, gentlest. Yeah, 100% this was all done with a Dremel. This, uh, These little channels were just um, literally my, my cutting head, and that's it. And I did it in about a minute, if that. But also, if you're going to be working with a Dremel tool in plastic of any kind, y'all, Safety glasses. Safety is fucking magic. Protect your eyes. Oh, here's the other thing. 
I forgot to add this. It came with a little door. <laughs> it came with a little door. So we're absolutely going to be putting this in too. Because I, I just kind of like the idea that someone, if, they, if they're going to use this for their own environment, it's... They might imagine that this is a section of the cavern that was specifically cordoned off for personal use of whomever or whatever dwells down here. Now, the other thing I forgot to mention on the LED holes, what I'm thinking here is basically the more beautiful outlandish parts of the Underdark. So we're talking glowing crystals, uh, very phosphorescent colors, a little bit of lichen, things like that. Uh, basically transferring from the dark and oppressive nonsense of, say, Mezzo Baranzan, and into, you know, the beautiful, wilder aspects of the Underdark. I just thought that would be really cool. So let's get to it. I've got some files here. Shouldn't take us too terribly long to file these things down. And in the meantime, while I work on this and have the chill music going in the background, if you have any questions, any comments, concerns about the tools, materials, or anything like that that I am currently using, fire it off in the chat. I'll answer it to the best of my ability. That's why I do these streams. I want y'all to try doing this stuff yourself. Let's see if I've got one with a bit more tooth. I should. Yes, I do. Excellent. These nice little needle files here uh, are also great for any time I have to, say, assemble a kit from GW or if I've ordered in a resin print from Etsy just for cleaning up little spots. Sanding sticks are also great for it, but unfortunately, I am completely out of sanding sticks. And I'm hoping at least sometime within the next maybe six months, that I will finally be able to afford a resin printer and then uh, have way more minis to paint for y'all on stream. And then we will build things for those minis because that's the kind of extra I am. And I like having little displays for them. We are going to need more shells, 100%. But y'all, it's been a hot minute. How are you? How was your weekend? Ours was pretty laid back. Uh, we were able to have Nick's and Phoenix over. We did some barbecue for them and that was lovely. And really, now that everything's unpacked, it's just been a matter of getting used to the place, getting into the groove of things. I have a little real mower now, which is delightful. I think I'm the only one delighted by that, and I don't care because I've always wanted one of those things. Chainsaw files are really good at sculpting tools. They come in different grits and all. Yep, 100%. Eventually, I need to pick up more sanding sticks anyway. When I say standing sticks, I don't mean like emery boards or nail files or anything like that. Um, there's a slightly flexible kind of square tube sanding stick, which is ideal for mini work, prop work, that sort of thing. And I used to have some, but alas, they did not make it in the move. That's one of the things I will need to pick up soon, along with some more cyanoacrylate. Right? The real mower is super quiet. Oh, that's rad, Carrick. I'm glad I'm not the only one. Like, doesn't it take more effort? Not really. And I like that I don't have to go down to the gas station to get gas or oil the thing up necessarily or do a bunch of maintenance on the mower. I literally just have to keep the blade sharp and keep it happy with some WD-40. Una Memento cleaning droid coming out. Thank you, cleaning droid. All right, I want to also go ahead and sand down some of the actual holes themselves. Just to make absolutely sure. Oh, wait, no. God, I haven't even worked on this piece yet. Stand by.
Yep, it's a push mower, just a real mower. One of those old school real mowers. I've always wanted one. And the last place we lived that had a lawn had a, an old uh, engine lawn mower and I freaking hated that thing. I was doing more maintenance on it than I ever did on my first car. to get the flush cutters and trim a little bit of this one. Uh, that is okay. Oh, before I forget, and apologies for anyone who is not currently subbed. Go to stream manager. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and start a three minute ad break so I can get rid of them for an hour. That'll give me plenty of time if, uh, for those who are watching an ad uh, to get through all of this sanding, all of this filing. By the way, how, how's the new camera looking for y'all? I'm pretty pleased so far. Uh, my dad had to push them over exactly the right size for our nothing of a lawn. Hey, you know, whatever works. We have... I... I, I like an average size lawn, really, for the Midwest. And it still works great. Oh, the band. All right. Let's get in some of these holes and get them sanded down a bit more. Now these are where my LED leads will be coming through, but just in case. Awesome, thank you, Kerman. Before I continue, there is one thing I, I want to share with y'all that will be done here on stream eh, relatively soon. Let me grab it. Oh, uh, thank you, Phoenix. It's good to be working again. So uh, we're going to be making this friend <laughs> on stream eventually. Someone was kind of enough to buy this off my throne wish list and send it to me. And yes, we're going to be doing some um, modifications on uh, this this orc friend and um, building him a suitable display because he is too goddamn metal just to stand on his own. So I'm excited for that. I can't tell you exactly when that one's going to happen, but relatively soon. So all I'm doing as I'm filing is awesome. also filing down the actual top and bottom edges of this drill hole, just so there's no sharp corners, no, no hot points for wires or leads to catch on. Take your time. Be mindful of where your fingers are. 
just about slowly but surely removing material. That way you don't get any heavy gouges, because again, this plastic's pretty tough, but it is still relatively a soft plastic. So if you're using things like files, Dremel tools, that sort of thing, just take your time, be careful, sneak up on the end result rather than just trying to plow through. No worries, Serenatronics. Yeah, we're just sanding uh, the holes I've drilled um, or filing them down. Make absolutely sure nothing's going to get snagged when I put in the electronics. Again, this is what happens whenever you have to build with shipping in mind. Because stuff's going to move inside the box. And no matter how well I tack things down, inevitably something's going to get knocked loose. So if I can prevent any damage to the leads on the LEDs or the wires beneath or the board itself, I will do that extra bit of work. Are those magnets on the base? Yes, these are neo neodymium magnets on the base, which strangely, even on this set, not all of them have magnets. Like some do, some don't. So I'm imagining that, I because I haven't looked, again, I've never actually purchased from Doors and Forge before. I have to imagine that they sell their sets with and without magnets specifically. Uh, the holes for hot glue win also consider drinking straws channel for wires, 100%. 100%. Thankfully, this build won't necessarily require those. But I'm thinking that I've got a future build plan where I really want to actually do some full scale, well, full scale, miniature um, wire, like journeyman wiring work. So using tiny drinking straws to run wires through and things like that. Because I still have this gothic sort of clock tower that I would love to build for Catherine and I. Right, Grumman? All right. These are ready to go as far as the filing is concerned. So next up, we need to go ahead and get these larger pieces glued together so we can start getting some green stuff on them. And the first thing we're going to be doing is any of the edges that we are planning to glue together need to be scored. Now, there is already a lot of texture on this stuff, which will help. But on the flat areas where I'm going to have flat on flat contact, whenever you're gluing plastic together in particular, go ahead and pre-score the area. It increases the surface area and allows the glue to actually grab onto that tooth. It just gives more things for that glue to adhere to, giving you a much stronger fit. Now, ideally, ideally, I'd be shoring this up with something like five minute epoxy, but I don't have five minute epoxy. I'm still restocking my lab. So what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be uh, super gluing this stuff together. I'm going to be using an accelerator uh, so it kicks off more quickly and then reinforcing and hiding, blending these seams with green stuff epoxy. So it'll still be a really nice, strong bond when it's all said and done. I have something I want you to eventually build me. I'll tell you after stream. Oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I want you to tell me now. Yo, know, you're working. And yes, this is how we communicate, even when she's not working. If we're in different rooms, we will send each other messages all the time because we're huge dorks. All right, so the first thing I need is, where did my, let me go ahead and grab a sculpting tool real quick. Come here, sculpting tools. Aha, sculpting tools. We'll be using this on the green stuff itself, but first there is, there you are. You're the one I want. This pick is great um, for going ahead and scratching into the surface of plastics that you want to glue together, but you can also use exacto knife you can use your uh, ulfa knife if you are super super careful uh because we're not necessarily going for precision here we're just messing up the area to give it more tooth we also generally like shouting across the house no because yeah i've i've got audio processing issues on the best of days so again this plastic is soft enough that i can dig into relatively simply you see i'm already getting a lot of good scratches in there and that's all you need. Just scratch up the material. 
This is the fun part where simple geometry takes over because each one of those scratches I'm making increases the overall surface area. An increase of the surface area means the glue, uh, glue has more to grab onto, spreads out more, and the actual geometry of the scratches themselves means that it's providing all these lovely nooks and crannies and teeth for the glue to adhere to. This is also the same trick I use whenever I'm working on props, 3D prints, uh, miniatures that have to glue together, all that good stuff. Isn't there a... Yes, there is a Korok. Uh, well, it's a... Um, more of a combination between uh, Totoro and Hestu, so giant Korok. That's going to happen. I also have the sculpture for uh, Calcifer from Howl's Moving Castle that I'm going to be making for Catherine soon. Because that is, I believe, what the patrons voted on for my next big build. And that one, of course, will be all nicely lit up. And I've got some special polymer clay I'm going to be working with that I'm really excited for. And someone, uh, bless the geeks, someone was kind enough online to go ahead and fully 3D model um, Calcifer's Oven from House Moving Castle. So I have all kinds of lovely reference to look at. Now, I personally won't be like printing it in 3D or anything, because right now all I have in the lab is um, my new FDM printer which is an Anycubic Cobra 2, which is fine, but it's not going to give me the level of detail I want for something like Calcifer's Oven. So I'm going to be making that out of largely XPS foam and polymer clay, I think. That's nicely scratched up, a little bit more. And it's just step and repeat. Basically, all I'm doing with this little dental pick thing here, I'm just doing a bunch of lines up and then a diagonal cross hatch. And that is more than enough for my gluing needs. Water. Hydrate, don't dihydrate. And before we actually get any glue on this, I'm also going to hit it with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean off any little tiny plastic bits in there. Try to give us the cleanest connection that I can possibly get. Isopropyl alcohol. Always good to have it on hand for any of your crafting needs. a minute to make sure all the alcohol completely evaporates before I introduce any other chemicals. So, so far so good. Y'all following along? Again, if you have any questions or 
are unsure about anything, just type that in the chat. There are no silly questions here. Uh, if you're looking for an interesting battery source for this build, I've been ripping apart Bluetooth headphones from the dollar store recently. LEDs pull such low power that you... Oh, that's genius. That is genius. Yeah, so instead of, instead of using little C203s, little button batteries. Oh, I like that. Tell me, tell me you're going to use that in a video soon. Soon enough, Padawan. <laughs> That should be dry enough now. So, simple, easy peasy. We are going to be using some uh, cyanoacrylate, uh, AKA super glue, and just uh, this Instaset. And all that is, is it immediately kicks off the reaction and the curing reaction in any super glue. Uh, just great when you don't want to sit around holding something together while the super glue cures. Just makes things a little bit faster on me. First thing we are going to do, though, just in case we do get any drippage. So. This side, we will be gluing on this side. Little dab will do ya. Oh, it is not. It is a fresh tube. Hey, look at that. Spread the love around just a touch. Basically, looking for a full thin veneer of this super glue across our surface. Here. Which will also allow me to see very quickly where I need to add more. Don't have to worry about so much squeeze out. Same trick I use with pretty much any and all of my glues. Well, maybe not my barge. All right, that's sitting nicely. We are going to set that up to the side for a moment because we're going to hit this with our accelerant. And good. A little bit of pressure to hold it together, and boom, it's glued. Not the best mechanical connection, obviously, but again, we are going to be reinforcing this with our seam blending with our two part epoxy. We're also going to go ahead and get these scratched up for the sort of alcove thing I want to build on the top of here so we can get these parts glued together. You get to sit to the side for now. Second verse, same as the first. We're going to scratch things up, clean off the scratches, glue it together. Today is Wednesday, right? I don't even know what day it is anymore. I'm hoping beyond hope to have a new design for y'all up in the Threadless shop next week and to be getting back to work on some new magic items and coloring pages and whatnot for the folks over on Patreon soon. And apologies for all the downtime. It's been a wild and very, very busy post move. Supposedly, if a uh, loose grasp of time is soup, is to be blood. Time is soup. 
thymus soup and it's in a blender and that blender is just randomly changing speeds <coughs> what is today it's smurz day the uh, 35th of november It's day. The light exists. When the light leaves us, it is night. I am good at time. <laughs> it's March 737th, 2020. Oh, that's a fucking mood. to make sure all the alcohol evaporates and then we're off to the races for the next bit <laughs> captain's log ah! the last three years have definitely been a very long century 100 percent can't confirm star date seven six nine two five point two there's a disturbance on the promenade but Fuck it. I'm in the hollow suite, living life large. Yeah, I said hollow suite. DS9 was my favorite Star Trek. Fight me. Not the hollow deck, the hollow suite. I'm all about that ring station life. Ah, man of taste, I see. Where did... Oh, there it is. Pardon me, all I'm taking a small vape break. And the fun thing is, Deep Space Nine, everyone has a comfort show. Or at least a, a lot of us neurodivergent folks have a comfort show. Deep Space Nine is definitely mine. The problem being, I can't watch it anymore. Because it's on Paramount Plus, and we don't have Paramount Plus. It used to just be on Netflix, and I could watch it all the time. And I had such delight being able to watch it. But no, now it's on Paramount+. Plus. I just want to settle down with Garak and Bashir and Quark and make spacecrafts, right? And granted, yeah, good value for the money, because there's a bunch of other Star Trek stuff I would love to watch as well on Paramount+. Plus. But... It's the fact that they denied me my comfort show behind a paywall. So I'm seriously considering buying just like the box set. <laughs> Late stage capitalism says no. All right, should be good to go on this. Second verse, same as the first. Nice bead of this glue. And Lil goes a long way. Also, free tip for y'all. If you are going to be dealing with super glue and any of your crafts, the next tool you might want to pick up is a nail file. Because it's happened to all of us at one point or another. We get it on our fingers. Our fingers get glued together. We unglue them, and there's still that weird little hard coating left behind. A nail file will take that off very, very quickly, very, very gently. 
you hang tight there. Yes, I hear you, Cider, and I don't obey because I'm streaming, sweetheart. Hey, Kimchi! Welcome on in. Hopefully you're doing well. Set you aside. Hit you with the accelerator. When this stuff hits 88 miles per hour, you're going to see some serious shit. All right. Let's buy our powers combined. Little bit of pressure. And boom. Uh, waiting for the word star and gate to happen just to see how long. Hey, Stargate's my other comfort show. Blessedly, I can still watch Stargate SG1. That has not been denied me. All right, cool. So what we're going to let these do is I want to have uh, these sort of sit for at least few more minutes uh we're coming up at the top of the hour anyway i hope you all have been enjoying this and anything else like these are the three main components for this build right we're gonna keep these separate until i need at absolute final to connect them so we're gonna be priming them separately all that good stuff uh when we come back we will probably start busting out the green stuff to start Hiding some of these interior seams, and yeah, should be a good time. So, I am going to leave you all with the chill music. Y'all talk amongst yourselves. Um, who's your favorite Stargate SG-1 and or DS9 character? And I will check out the responses when I come back in about five to seven minutes. See you in a bit. Can, I will, and I did, Steph, suffer with me.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope y'all had a good break. We will get back to the crafting in just a hot second. I was reading over some of the responses here. It's been delightful just watching people geek out. You. Do we need you right now? No, I don't think we do. We will get you swapped out at some point. Go away. Do not need the pop filter. I'm not actually recording professional dialogue. So, for me, Stargate SG-1, my favorite character is Garrick. Elim Garrick. Um, but... Uh... Early teenager me, when that show aired, had a huge crush on Major Kira. No lie. I had a thing for Major Kira. I still kind of do, in a way, for the character. Um, For favorite Stargate character, does Trelak have to be Kel Shacked? <laughs> favorite Stargate SG-1 character, it's... Damn, that is hard. Uh, it's kind of a tie for me between um general hammond and braytac with uh, a tie between jack o'neill um and samantha carter as a very very close second teal is in a teal kid is in the league of his own for me he's not only one of my favorite stargate sg1 characters oh god has received additional coffee funding. <laughs> thank you phoenix and no we don't have to do the true um teal's just one of my favorite characters period because Teal'c is a redemption arc done right, I think. In my estimation, it's it's a redemption arc fall from grace done right. Oh, we got Raiders. Welcome in. Hey, perfect timing. We just got back from uh, break. Hi, Ranjan. Uh, shout out for Ranjan, please. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, hi, hello. My name is Zero Reynolds. I am your friendly neighborhood artificer. I am an author, an artist, a uh, teach RPG content creator, a maker, uh, sometimes variety streamer, ambulatory coffee vessel, coffee cobbler, coffee goblin? No, that's not a thing. Coffee goblin and me, Pop Skull. Welcome on in. How was your stream? We were just discussing. Um, I had the folks talk about their favorite characters from Star Trek Deep Space Nine or Stargate SG-1 over break. And we're just discussing that now. Zero is a cool guy. I'm just a guy. I, I try my best. Now, G and Ranchan, on the other hand, are very cool people whom you should be following. It was good. Excellent. Excellent. We're going to get back to the crafting here in a wee bit. Just cleaning up my area so we can get to the next step. Vala Maldoran. Oh, Claudia Black in general, though. I mean, come on. Alert. Oh, hello. Thank you, Lexilo the Lava Ghost, for uh, y'all trying to start a chew. But but thank you for gifting that sub to Ranjan. But this side, Ben Browder, Ben Browder, and and Claudia Black in anything. Let's be honest here, in anything, just put them two together on screen, Alert. and I'm happy. Has oh, you. Thank you, Phoenix, for gifting that sub to Gelatinous Rube. Y'all are really trying to kick off another hype train, I see. But what about second? The lab has received additional coffee funding. Okay, we can have second chew to fill the bars, but once the bars are full, we're good. Y'all realize that. Okay? Thank you, Lily. Yep, here it is. Here it is. Okay, sub bars full. Sub bars full. We see that. We agree on it. We mutually define the existence of a full sub bar. Yes? Yes. We can all see it. <laughs> yeah, here's another chew. Oh, good lord. Thank you, Phoenix. Love that that reference as far as escaping gets. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Hey, no worries, Ranchan. Uh, if you need to go take off this, uh, uh, also any of the folks who came over on the raid, make sure you practice some self-care. Uh, would love you to hit that little follow button before you take off, though. We would love to see you around the lab. And we are on the march towards 2K followers here uh, in Artificer Industries. I don't care. Mayborn is how you do the morally great character. I love him. Yes, Mayborn was a fucking delightful asshole. And towards the end, though, he just got more and more fun. And absolutely, he's deliciously morally gray. Quark. Ah, uh, Quark. <laughs> How to do 
a proper comedic foil because Quark is written, hands down, written, custom made, bespoke to be the foil. Oh, they, oh, hey, bars are full. Look at it. Look at it. We got flames. Do we have flames? I thought we had flames. Do we have flames? Give me flames. I will do this manually if I have to. Flames. Flames. Damn you, flames. Flames. Turn on. Flames. There, we have flames. <laughs> flames. We've got blue flames. Eventually, I'll add the uh, sound effect back. Like I said, there's a lot I have to catch up on. But now that we're doing the hype train slash cult meeting thing, uh, no thoughts, head empty, only chew. Um, what would y'all care to discuss? Also, I'll be the first to say, as far as Stargate SG-1 is concerned, Anubis was a wasted opportunity. I love the Anubis arc, don't get me wrong. I particularly love the uh, afterlife diner scene of the Ascended, but Anubis was kind of wasted. I can drive to your house now. I'm excited. Yes, you can. We are within driving distance now. Yeah, I don't know. What are we discussing? I don't know. I'm leaving it up to chat. Chat is in, in control of chat currently. Bit like the, you know, patients painting up the asylum. But hey, what are you going to do? Uh, thank you all so so much for filling the bars and for the the warm very warm welcome back i do appreciate it uh we've got a minute and 30 seconds and then uh we'll get back to crafting in the meantime claudia black needs to be on a ttrpg shoot any of them and it well claudia black obviously and First and foremost, I'd love to see Claudia Black run a game. I would love to see uh, her be the GM. Uh, the chat is like the ocean. No one understands his whims. We can only ride the waves and sometimes the tsunamis. SG-1's ancients had a real problem of littering the galaxy with very dangerous shit, right? Looking at you, or I. Oh, yeah, I'm glad you like the music um, stuff. Nah, it's, it's fine, uh, Catherine. Just, mm. I don't know what this is. It's sort of like a traveling ruby rod. But I would love to see any of the cast from Stargate SG. Thank you, Phoenix. I would love to see any of the cast from Stargate SG One sit down to a game. Stream that shit. You know? But also, I mean, let's face it, there are a lot of a lot of folks out there I would love to see stream a game celebrity wise. Thank you all so much for I have trained. Thank you so much for filling the bars. I really appreciate it. How many llamas do you not have in your house? Great, let me count. Ten. Including llama minis, there are ten llamas in Maple House right now. Which, incidentally, Maple House is what we're calling our place. Last joint was the Hobbit Hole. This is Maple House. 150% sass? Yes, and that's the beautiful thing. That's what I want. I need that in my life. I need to watch uh, Stargate, but I really want to watch Battlestar Galactic again. It has been years. And that was a damn good show up until the end. But knowing how it ends, I'm I'm always reticent to try to rewatch it, which is a shame. It's kind of like my reticence to replay Mass Effect 3. Because Mass Effect 3 was brilliant right up until the final 15 minutes. Definitely a llama cult. It's not by my choice. 
This is what happens. The shit that llama minis in particular, you can blame Aqua Dish Panda for. And Painting Pirate. Painting Pirate found the file. And then it became a thing. Anytime I bought minis from Aqua Dish Panda and her partner Briar, they would include a fucking llama mini in the order. Free of charge. So I was in a deluge of plastic llamas for a while. <laughs> but how many of them have Mjolnir's? Only one. <laughs> You're fine, Sam. Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Yeah. It was... I hate to say this because it seems like such a cop-out, but if there is any show, any sci-fi, that can truly be called a, a quote unquote product of its time. It's it's the the modern era Battlestar Galactica. For good or for ill. And then the direct call and response to that being Stargate Universe, which was a terrible fucking idea. I that that I'm not gonna die on that hill. I'll kill other people on that hill. Stargate Universe was not good, and it was a knee-jerk reaction to Battlestar Galactica period caprica uh i like caprica though it was done dirty yes hey naughty we're evidently just geeking out right now we'll get back to the craft in a second <laughs> we're all geeks here this is what we do Oh no, fighting words. I It's got fantastic actors. It's got great writing. It's not a Stargate show though. That one I can say with utmost confidence. And any Stargate fan, once they sit down and think about it, they cannot say otherwise. If you like the show, more power to you. I'm not going to knock your taste, but it's not a Stargate show. It's a it's a show that has Stargate trappings. It's not a Stargate show. What makes a Stargate show a Stargate show is the spirit and tone of the show itself, which is also why I have such little time for remakes in general or, you know, new takes. No worries, Toaster. Uh, if I wanted to watch Battlestar Galactica, I'd watch Battlestar Galactica, not Stargate. Yep, we're letting the glue set. Yeah, currently letting glue set. And, and ranting a bit about Stargate Universe, which again, fine show. Uh, there are members of that cast that I will literally line up on a hot day to watch something that they're in because they're just that damn good. The, the show is an interesting concept and under any other umbrella, I probably would have liked it more, but it's not a Stargate show. It's just not. Interesting concepts, very interesting lore that I would have liked to see in the two, I guess you can say, the flagship and the spinoff of Stargate SG-1, Stargate Atlantis. Um, but it was too much of a direct response trying to catch the zeitgeist of Battle Battlestar Galactica. And they went too grim. Way too grim with it when they had no reason to. The whole thing about... Here's a free writing tip for all of you out there. Grim, dark, and high stakes only work when there is levity to compare it to. When there is a preceding event of light that really shows you the darkness. That's why some of the best moments in Stargate SG-1, when you look at them in their own terms, are really fucking dark really dark but they work and they don't seem out of place because there's a lot of light to be seen with stargate universe everything was kind of foobar from the word go and the moments of levity felt more forced and everything sucking all the time in perpetuity that's not interesting if you are going to write towards those kinds of just oppressive themes and sort of oppressive atmosphere 
you have to give the audience breathing room. You have to give them a moment to pause, to catch their breath, to see some hope. And then, yeah, you can pull the rug out from underneath them. But you have to respect the audience's time. And the one thing I don't think the writers of Stargate SG-1 did was respect the audience's time. Uh, third act fall can't be truly felt unless you have the midpoint high shift. True, true. Uh, like this space night, deep space nine handled that with fucking aplomb and say what you will. I'm nowhere in the argument of, you know, Babylon five versus deep space nine as apples, oranges, both shows did it well. And they, 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 the writers cared about the audience's time, not only because they only had a very limited time to keep the audience's retention, but they were also working under the auspices. Those shows were groundbreaking. The fact that they were serialized fiction in what was a non cable, non streaming environment. You could literally lose the plot if you missed an episode. So they were walking a very, very fine line and they had to respect the audience's time on that, that if an audience member comes in and they don't know necessarily what's going on and there's no recap, they still have to give them something to engage them, which means the willful manipulation of their emotions, give them highs, contrasting lows, let it play out. Uh, I've gone through DD modules. I really wanted to be players into the ground who was uh, really giving a win. Yeah, exactly. And that's, it's just true across the board for all writing, any media that you are going to consume, uh, be it video games, TTRPGs, shows, movies, streaming, whatever. Um, you have to compare and contrast. The most interesting stories are the entire gamut, it's the entire roller coaster. Anything else is just you being stuck on the roller coaster that is constantly climbing and never cresting until you pull into the station and they tell you to get the fuck off. I'm glad we had this discussion though. It was really impromptu, but one of the things I love in the, the streaming space is that we can have these discussions that I can share a little bit of my knowledge with you and that we can all sort of strive to make better things, you know? Anywho, I think it's time. Let's get back to the craft. Boop. And here we are. Blue is set enough that I can handle this thing and move it around a bit. Now we need da, 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 our green stuff. We need our green stuff. We need some sculpting tools. We got those there. So let's get to work. Absolutely love the character arcs in uh, Babylon 5 so well developed over time. 100%. 100%. Stuff should still be good. I actually picked this one up um, last year. And this stuff has a pretty good shelf life, but you know, you never can tell. What I'm going to do is slice the outer coating first. Before I cut into this, so I can remove the plastic a little bit easier. The plastic coating is still stuck on there. Love. Oh, there we go. Hey, I got it. Put you aside for right now. Cut off a relatively equal portion of our blue. Get it mixed into the green. You're so close to Gen Con now. The writer symposium portion was that what I did for two years. Nice. Eventually, I would really like to go to Gen Con. Um, one of the things we are looking forward to is getting, uh, or at least me getting out some more cons next year i don't know if that's going to happen it's really it's a matter of how finances line up because back in the day whenever i went to a convention i was a guest they literally paid to fly me out to do panels and stuff and i'm not expecting any convention to do that these days so it's now down to can i afford airfare can i afford a hotel that sort of thing Oh, 
about this stuff, it's gonna fight me tooth and nail. No dice. Good enough. So it's lit. Stuff is coming up on its shelf life, but it'll work for this build. Small tangent, have you ever heard of folks who, because of the way their brains process color, don't see green but blue yellow? Yes, I have. No worries, Zonda. All right. Now we just start mixing it up. This stuff has a pretty decently long working time before it starts really setting in. But I still don't want to mix up a ton of it, so I'm trying to keep portions relatively small. Just work from what I got. If I need to mix up more, I'll mix up more. Let's take the time mixing in everything till we get our nice green. Off my fingers. Also, I don't know if y'all heard it. It was slightly before the break. I had a very vocal cider in here. who was quite upset that Catherine's office door was closed. So she had opinions, TM, and needed to share them with me. So... All we're doing here is making sure we got everything mixed in. If there's a little striation, it's not a huge deal. But we want it as evenly mixed as possible. That's looking pretty good. Yeah, 100%. Alright, that should be more than enough to work with for right now. So, it implements the off. It'll work. I'm just going to start darting this stuff in. Getting it smushed into our scene here. And after that, we will start sculpting. And that's just going to be a little bit more reinforcement for our piece. Hopefully, sculpt it in such a way to hide the seam. This stuff is pretty great if ever you get into miniatures because you can also use it uh, to sculpt things like additional weapons and cloaks and capes and flags and other fun stuff for your minis. texture here. Just aluminum foil on my dowel rod. Same thing I do on XPS foam. Of 
course, the goal is, once this is all said and done, you will have to look very hard to see where the seat actually is. Do that crack there. That out of it. This one going right up the wall. We're just going to make a thin snake of this stuff. Get it in there. XPS foam is going to be. A little bit of water on him. If it ever starts really sticking to your fingers, um, you can use things like baby oil and whatnot, but honestly, just a little water to keep some moisture in your fingers helps a lot. Get this tucked in and then I need a little bit of water. Yep. Some skull. Trying to hold it in such a way where y'all can see is a funky little angle. to replicate the details exactly because that is just going to be impossible on my end. But if I can just get close enough, whenever we prime this thing, it's going to be very, very hard for the untrained eye to be able to see the difference. And that's all you need. It's really, the green stuff, all you need is close enough. Oh, no worries, Catherine. Hey, no worries, Terrange Ronix. Hope you have a good day. And like I said, we're going to be working on this one for a while, so feel free to pop in anytime. Y'all should definitely go check out Terrain Tronics online, makers of the Conwee Castle and other amazing stuff for lighting up your creations. Definitely one of my favorites. over this funky little dripping rock texture thing right in here. I have a package? Oh, I have a package. We may have to do an opening. I think it might be PLA. Because <laughs> I had to order in more PLA. Because the secret project I'm working on right now, the secret printing is, is yeah, pre-PLA heavy. So look at that, y'all. Already getting some good texture in there. Let's see if I can zoom in. There we go. Good texture in there. We're getting some match work done. So yeah, this stuff is fantastic for hiding seams in all manner of miniature sculpting goodness. Let's get to work on the rest of this big bad boy seam here. Pulling out another thin snake of the stuff. 
I will go ahead, even though I'm not worried about detail on the back here, I will go ahead and add some to the seam here. Again, just for a little bit more structural support. I love it when a plan comes together. Come on. Don't do that, do this. First, a little water to smooth it down some more. Making sure I get it tucked into that seam and the extra bits as much as possible. Computer, clear my notifications. Let's get some more details on it. Edges more into the rock. The secret to any sort of seam blending is just getting the outermost edge as flat as possible, or better yet, if you've got a lot of texture like this, working it into that texture. That will help hide the crimes, so to speak. Rock texture will do ya. Second verse, same as the first. that that crack goes all the way across and that there's not this massive gap in between them. Hey, Synaptic! Welcome on in. So we're going to get a bit more... I guess you can say macro with some of the texture just by poking these larger holes. Anything that gives some visual interest breaks up the overall detailing that we've got going on there will definitely help. This same gig is smooth out some of the edges. We get into those cracks and crevices as much as possible. Flatten out our edges. No worries. Enjoy that lurk and crochet, Phoenix. That is looking pretty tasty, y'all. I am excited with how this is turning out. It is a good day in my lab. That's in my lab, not my lap. 
Thank you, closed captioner. I see you. over to see if there's anything else I want to tighten up a little bit here and there yeah it's also been a bit of time since I've been on so welcome in you are just in time the lab is once again open on twitch a bit of water Come on, thank you. I'm liking it, y'all. I'm liking it a lot. Oh, thank you so much, Synaptic. Yeah, we are very, very happy that that move is done. Whew. It was a lot. Cool. Now, just to tie up this scene back here. I don't need that much. And then we will get to work on... Uh, it'll be second verse, same as the first. Just seaming up this one. Yeah, so very freaking tired and still a bit sore too. Oh, hello. Hey, Cypher. Uh, more errands. Shit. Hope those go well. Thank you so much for the resub. Shout out for Cypher of Tia, please, and thank you. Get that rock texture in there again. See what details we can carry across it. Let's see. Like that one. We can do that. Won't be going long. It's, oh, just the. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Errands for us these days had us going all over creation, so. far I am really happy with this piece how it's turning together y'all I just I did I completely mashed details on the back here oh well that is an easy fix I think that this bit is just about done. I'm going to wick off that excess water there. Yeah, looking good. I think we can call that one pretty much done. And again, the main thing is I'm not going for complete uh accuracy and replicating some of these details i just have to get close enough because once this thing is all primed 
it's going to be that much harder to spot the scene. And that's all you have to do. So if ever you start getting into this stuff and you want to put a model together that has gaps or just wasn't printed as easily, again, don't go for perfection. Just sneak up on close enough and let the paint do the rest. Mafia chat? Oh, let me check. Do, do. Oh, shit, Cypher. Oh, man, I am so, so sorry. That has been a fucking saga for you. I'm gonna put this aside, put these aside, get these into their own separate plastic baggies. Is that why you're running to Walgreens, FYI? Or why did I say for your information? God, I'm tired. Like I said, this stuff has a pretty good working time. But left to its own devices, it will start to harden up. So all you have to do is give it a little bit more TLC, get it rolling again. And so long as it's pliable enough to do this, it's pliable enough to take details. So just keep that in mind. Let's get in my work labs. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Ah, gotcha. Oh, I hope the rest of the day and the rest of this particular build goes much better for you. Probably a larger snake than I absolutely needed, but whatever. Make it work. Hey, welcome on in. Since it had to be signed for with my doorbell out. Oh, shit. Damn. The hits just keep on coming. Smoothed out and taking advantage of any texture that's already on here. Safe journey, Cypher. We will still be here. sure we get nice and deep into those cracks and crevices and yes I know innuendo y'all have fun with that Texturing. Yeah, 
is definitely starting to cure up. Uh, it's still just pliable enough for me to get some details into. If I do any more than what I've got, I will have to mix up some more, but I think we'll honestly be fine. Sure, we carry over some of those details across. I'll blend that seam better. Now we've got these sort of column things going here, which helps tremendously because those are very easy to push into the surface recreate without too much effort I say as it starts to come unstuck from its position take a bite but to this area again This one will definitely have to be close enough because it's starting to kick off a little bit too much and become unworkable. I've got to be real careful. I need it to adhere. I need it to cure solidly all the way through. Trying to be in a multiple phone. Oh no, Lily. That is no bueno. This one we're not going to be too fussed about since this is a pretty plain rock texture on the back of it. So that's all we got to do. It's good for us because we're getting around to the point in this stuff's life where it starts to get grumpy. Hey, welcome back, Sam. Oh no. Well, that was only that's only round one. I didn't hear no bell. I believe in you, Sam. You can do this. That's pretty damn good. I'm pretty pleased with it, especially since it was really fighting me at the end there. Make sure we tack this bit down. A few more larger hole details in there. <laughs> the Tiger on Kazoo plays. Ah, my soundtrack. So what are we thinking, y'all? And that took me... Now, mind you, I wasn't exactly focused. That was chit-chatting with all of y'all. That took maybe an hour-ish, a little under an hour. And once that is all cured and dried up, oh, we are good to go. And when we prime it, oh, that is just going to vanish. So cool. We have our upper balcony 
which will also have its own lights. We have our lower display, which will get painted up with phosphorescence and all that good stuff. I'm excited. I am excited. I like how this is coming together. All right, so our next step when we come back from break is I'm going to get this set up to make sure my lines on my foam block are still pretty good. And then we're going to have to start cutting out the foam block itself. And our main huge pieces will be done, and I should be able to get them primed off camera tomorrow. And tomorrow, we might actually start painting. Hey, welcome back, Shears. Hopefully you got good snacks. Hopefully you got enough for the rest of the class. I only say that because suddenly I'm very snackish. Now, good trick you can do. See, I mixed up way too much here, but I'm gonna tear off a little bit of it. I'm just going to roll this up to something around the size of a pea. More or less that. Now I'm going to set this aside and I'll know that if this is cured, this stuff is also dried. Just a good way to check without accidentally pulling something up by touching it or ruining any of your detail because I have not done this stuff in this level of humidity or at altitude yet or at this altitude yet. So it's always good to pull off a piece to set aside, let it dry on its own. And uh, if I mess this piece up, no issue. I'm going to go ahead and set this stuff aside for right now. Pull out my block of foam. Oop. Move all this stuff aside. Uh, it is about break time zero. Yeah, I could have snacks. Yes, I will be taking a break shortly. I've got enough for everyone. Extra caffeine. Oh, blessings. I would not say no to more caffeine, but instead I have uh, LaCroix, the the best flavor adjacent drink in some reality. All right, so I'm going to pop back over here real quick. What we're going to do is we are going to take a quick break. Um, uh, during that time, I'll be running a three minute long ad. So apologies. Uh, it's just easiest for me to do it on the break instead of people being interrupted when they come in on a raid or whatnot. And make sure you stand up, stretch, hydrate, go get yourself some snacks. I know I'm going to. And I will see you all in just a bit. Be right back.
Welcome back. Welcome back. Hope you had a good break. Ooh, goldfish. I have not had goldfish in ages. I have peanuts. Catherine brought me this adorable little cup full of peanuts. And on top were some dried um, apple chips. That's my snack. <gasps> yes. Gluten-free donuts. Cheers, that's a mood. Like I mentioned to Catherine, um, if anyone ever wants a true understanding or demonstration of the phrase food is sleep, move, move, just do a big move. And I promise you, just snacking will revitalize you in ways that you never knew it could. Hey, Lorna. Welcome on in. The peanuts money. Thank you, Brian. Gentlemen enjoy their nuts with pinkies extended. I'm back. <laughs> Oh, how'd your Warhammer game go? Oh, cheers. Good luck. Been away from chat for a bit. Did everyone hear about the thing? No. What is the thing? Hi, Sam. Nothing but the finest in content creation for us here. Nice, Lorna. You'll have to forgive me. Once I am done snacking upon yon nuts, we'll get back to crafting. Finally! Holy shit! We have been waiting for Twitch to roll that out for years. I will say this. It's like I said... Even when I was angry at Twitch, the new CEO that took over at least is making moves like they're trying. And I really appreciate that because honestly, that's all any of us have been asking for for so long. Yeah. I mean, we had been asking about um, discoverability through clips for a while because again, them taking away hosting and this was under the previous ceo was a huge blow to us right but more recently they've been making overtures and or moves that make me really really happy i'm still not on board with their partner plus program which again for those of you who have never heard this from me i'm going to reiterate i am never doing a partner push okay i have seen way too many partner pushes i have no interest in it i am not going to do that grind if i if it happens and for whatever reason i become a partner fantastic i am i refuse to put myself and this community through that nonsense but um the twitch uh the curated clips discoverability feature is really really nice i'm hoping to see that get implemented soon um, they just gave us the ability to feature highlighted clips on our page, which is also really nice. So I'm, I'm really interested. This, this CEO and this new team seems to really care. So 
Long story short, I'm cautiously optimistic, which is something I've not been able to say in a very long time. And that's what led to that whole back and forth with, am I going to be on Twitch? Am I going to be on YouTube? Am I going to be a Twitch? I'm going to be on YouTube. Um, for my part, even foregoing my cautious optimism, I'm going to be here. Now, I did not do this today, but the plan is that for crafting streams, what I'm going to try to do is simultaneously record what I'm streaming in OBS to my hard drive. And then after the fact, edit it down to like a time lapse and folks can watch that on YouTube if they want. But as far as like where my main focus is going to be, where my main energy is going into everything that that's, that's pretty much going to be here on Twitch when I'm not doing extra stuff for the people who are supporting my Patreon. Now I hear that synaptic. That's, that's always, that's always a mood. Hmm. Nuts. But definitely, thank you, Brian, for bringing that to my uh, attention. That is awesome. Actually, tell y'all what. I have to wait for this stuff to dry and all I'm going to be doing is, is cutting out this foam shape. Not particularly interesting stuff. So for this last hour of stream, since this is my first stream back, let's chat. I'm just going to move this over here and then move this over here a little bit. Hmm. I'm going to finish chewing. Um, new rental house is fantastic. Uh, we have not recovered. I need to be able to chew faster. We have unfortunately not recovered. Um, and that's just due to injuries, but everything's unpacked now. Everything's set up. We're good to go. Um, it was always bewildering to me and Catherine, at least, I guess, because we have moved so many times. Whenever we hear someone say, wow, y'all are so organized, we still are ha living out of boxes six months later. I'm just like, I can't live like that. Catherine can't live like that. The whole point of our space is that we want it to be welcoming and set up exactly the way we like it. So the sooner we can do that, the sooner a place feels like home. <laughs> no worries, safe driving. Don't want to see him in proper violation stream etiquette. Uh, can I say some happy stuff? Uh, you can provide it. It is not self-promotion. And I don't mean to be a hard ass about that, but I basically that's got to be a zero tolerance rule. But if you've got happy personal news, yeah, feel free to share it. Oh, thank you, Lorna. Um, mine still needs more storage. If you can believe that mine actually still needs more storage. And I'm still tinkering with the best orientation of stuff. This will work for now. I really like where I've got my my fancy cam set up and everything else, uh, but it still needs tweaking, but that's always the case. I think a lot of people underestimate how long it takes to unpack setup and end up having to go back to life school work before they're done. Yeah, that's another big thing, definitely. I appreciate, appreciate that, Synaptic. Yes, so uh, Artificer streams are coming back. The only change there is that they're, excuse me, they're gonna start at noon uh, US Central time. And that's only to make sure that I have enough time to eat some breakfast and then eat some lunch before I get to the stream because it's gonna be the longest stream of the week for me. In the morning, at the start of stream, we're going to be doing Artificer chat. And I, I've really, really missed that. And I'm really excited to get back to it. After that, though, peanuts, y'all. After that, uh, once Artificer chat is done, we'll be switching gears and streaming some gaming. That's going to be my gaming stream for the week. And this Friday, we're going to do Artificer chat. And then we will be diving into Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> All right, Lorna. 
I can believe it. Y'all have so many tools and crafts my goblin eyes for this big. Yeah, it's a lot. And I, I just need more space. What it was before it was um 11 a.m. Mountain, which would have been noon central. But originally I was gonna say, okay, we're just gonna move it to 11 a.m. Central time. No, I'm giving actively giving myself that extra hour to make sure I have eaten and all that good stuff because those streams on Friday are gonna end up being like five, six hours long, potentially. <laughs> ah! Uh, when mom and I moved, I was determined to get unpacked any stuff from my personal space. I still have to reorder stuff. Yeah, I hear that. If it's not unpacked within a year of move, I throw it away. I same. Not even gonna lie, same. That's part of my purge process before any move. Is is the six month rule? Yeah, we need time for tacos because Friday is our taco day. There's an amazing joint near us that does oh oh such good street style tacos. And that's what we're going to be doing on Fridays is ordering in some tacos from this joint before I stream. Yeah, no time change for you. No. When we throw things away in the packing process, do we really want to drag this up? <laughs> I mean, right? Moe's is amazing. Like, it's so, so nice to find a legit joint again. Mine, Catherine was born in Texas. I spent a good chunk of my life in Houston. We're very particular about our tacos. Uh, we've been here two weeks and we've had them delivered like half a dozen times. Yes. Well, we had to try the other flavors of, of the tacos. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, the carnitas are excellent, but you got to branch out sometimes. We got lucky here and there's a Mexican place that delivers. Nice. But seriously, these tacos are legit. So it is becoming our tradition on Fridays. We order in some some tacos. Uh, I get to eat before stream. We come on the stream. We do the artificer chat. And this time also, if people are talking about fucking food again, I'm not leaving the stream hungry because I've eaten. Um, we do the artificer chat and then we switch gears and go into whatever game I'm playing that week for the foreseeable future. I want to say at least until October. That's going to be Baldur's Gate 3. Now, when October hits, the last faith drops. And I'm seriously considering uh, doing that one because, again, I don't have the ability to stream Castlevania Symphony of the Night for y'all yet. Hopefully one day. Um, but Last Faith is going to be that sort of uh, happy consolation prize because I've been waiting on this one a long time. If you get the chance on Steam, look up The Last Faith. Just watch the trailer. Thank me later. There's a place I go to even after I moved. It's that worth it. That has damn good tacos and sangria. Ooh, I could go for some sangria. And homemade iced tea. Nice. Put this aside so I don't smack it accidentally with my hand. So yeah. Now, granted, I will be streaming five times a week. That is the plan. There is going to be some weeks where... You know, the best laid plans of Mice and Men and Zeros off to go awry, and I'm going to have to skip a day or something. Uh, I will always try to make that up. But pretty much I can guarantee you, Monday through Thursday, we're going to be doing something crafty or creative. Because that's that's my content, right? So some days it's going to be working on stuff like this with the build for uh, Die Hard Dice. Sometimes it's going to be mini painting. Sometimes it's going to be foam work. Sometimes it's going to be prop work. Sometimes it's just going to be a Photoshop stream. It's going to be something. And Fridays are the day that I not only get to relax and bask in your wins, but it's also the day of the week that I get to unwind a little bit and just play a game and just have some fun, you know? <clears throat> Captions are not currently working. Stand by. Test, test, test. They should be working now. <clears throat> Titan Quest. I do not remember the first one. For a second, my brain automatically read that as Titanfall, Titanfall 2, and I'm like, well, I know. I used to play Titanfall 2 all the time. They are working? Okay, good. I, I had forgotten the captions I'm using right now are not integrated to OBS because I wanted people to have the option to have them on or off. So I have to remember to turn them back on whenever I come back from break. <coughs> Gay Panic the Game. Baldur's Gate is Gay Panic the Game. Yes. 
100 and i already know i went ahead and made the character that i'm going to show off on stream and it's one of my old old play uh pcs uh d uh tiefling named malakota so we're gonna be playing malakota on stream i already know who i'm gonna romance in that first playthrough with malakota and yeah should be a good time yeah i have i if i've played titan quest i don't remember Carlac. Carlac. it's Carlac. everyone's all about hysteria and i'm like uh no 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 Carlock is the hot, badass metal chick. I am 100% here for it. She is amazing and delightful. And she is going to uh, be our first romance, I think. Now, I know you can do things like Polycule in Baldur's Gate 3, which I really appreciate. I think that was such a nice thing for them to throw in. Um, I don't have that kind of attention span, though. So I don't think I'm going to be doing the polycule. Oh, that's awesome, Sam. Yeah, that was the other great thing is you can do non-binary characters. You can do trans characters. They put so much love and accessibility and attention to detail into this game. It's truly something special. And straight panic and pan panic. Oh, yes. Hoping to get BG3 at the end of the month. Hope so. Carlac and Shadowheart. Oh, so uh, for those who like Shadowheart, uh, no spoilers, but she carries a very interesting artifact. If you go to YouTube right now, Bill Durand from Punish Profs Academy has already made that artifact and has plans for it on their site if you would like to make the artifact yourself. Go check it out. It's a fantastic video. I hear you, Lorna. Um... I have two hands. I look forward to my polycule with Broody Vampire, Hot Jurid, and Fire Mommy. Yes. But yeah, go check that out. Uh, the worst thing for me, though, so here's the thing. I bought Baldur's Gate 3 when it first dropped, when it was still in early access, right? And I had fallen off playing it for a while because they were still updating it and everything else. And I was delighted to learn that if you had bought it at that stage, you got the digital, like, deluxe edition for free the upgrade for free we get here we're still unpacking it wasn't until yesterday that i finally had a spare bit of time to be able to fire up the game it was literally sitting there on my computer that entire time taunting me and i did not get to actually play it until yesterday uh, it will be available also on PS5 in uh, September, Reese. I don't know if you have a PS5, but another option. We're hoping to get a PS5. Hope to get the game when I can afford it. I want to pet the bestest doggo in out there, right? Uh, survive the outside twice. Fuck yes. Give this lady a cookie. I, I have no cookies right now. I have I have two part epoxy and uh, the, no you know, despite the inclinations of some in this community to want to put craft materials in their mouths, do not eat the epoxy. It is not good for you. It is bad. Hey, my cup. Welcome on in. You don't have any consoles? Oh, I hear you, Reese. Well, hopefully one day. Yeah, something to look forward to, something to work towards. Yeah. Ooh, what kind of muffins, love? What kind of muffins are we getting? No, not forbidden cookies. Just do not eat. XPS foam won't kill you. It doesn't taste particularly good, but it won't kill you. This epoxy shit will mess you up. Do not. Oh, that's right. Y'all, I'm a lucky man. See what Catherine's about to make for us? I'm a lucky man. And we're about to get into autumn, which means all the autumn cooking. Also, y'all, our kitchen is large enough for Catherine and I to exist in at the same time, which means we can cook together in the kitchen again. And that's really exciting. Uh, chocolate chip. Yeah, 100% chocolate chip cookie. I'm always for chocolate chip. Yeah, epoxy like uncured resin is toxic and bad for your health. Can you make green stuff cookies? Yes, I can make them look like cookies. <laughs> Don't eat them. I can make the foam look like cookies. Don't eat them.
But yeah, I was, that's honestly one of the things that sold Catherine and I on renting this place. As weird as that may sound, uh, we looked at the size of that kitchen and we had been living in a place with a very small galley kitchen. And we had missed being able to exist side by side in the kitchen and cook together and things like that. So now we can again. It's really nice. The foam has a nice chewy texture. Don't eat the foam. Our kitchen is so small, we can't actually open the refrigerator 100%. Oh, we've been in stuff like that before. Sympathies. Uh, definitely sympathies. The biggest thing we have to do right now is, like I said, save up so Catherine and I can have new bikes. Again, we don't own a car. We get everywhere pretty much by bicycle. Um, so I'm hoping beyond hope between what I make this month and what I'll make at the start of next month that we'll be able to get new bikes again. Because anywhere else we can go, like when we want to go up to Chicago, right? We'll just catch an Uber to the train station and then we will take the train up to Chicago. So that's not a problem. But getting around here, we're very, very limited with walking. And there's a bunch of fun stuff in the middle of town that takes a little bit too long to walk to. So we need bikes. <laughs> Thank you, Nadi. Speaking of which, still hoping beyond hope. This is in the plan, mind. Um, that we can get up for our first uh, Chi Town visit next month. Uh, that is the plan. So, fingers crossed. We've got so many friends living in Chicago right now, y'all. It's. Again, part of the reason we moved out this way is because we know so many people in Chicago. We know people in this area, so it helps. There is a bus service. Yeah. But we're, yeah, we're on the weird outer part of it. We're very much almost on the edge of town where we're currently living. Hey, no worries, Sam. Hopefully parenting stuff goes well. Like We're just shooting the shit for this last hour because, again, the only... Hey, welcome on in. The only other thing I've got to do right now is cut up this piece of foam. And that's literally, you see the lines I have drawn on there? I'm going to be cutting the foam out of that. And that's it. So not exactly top tier content. But I can switch over real quick because this is starting to cure up. Our seam that we sculpted in using the green stuff turned out very nicely i think and when it's all primed up you will be hard pressed to find where it is so i'm very happy about that actually move it closer to the camera hey look at that detail i love this camera so yeah we are good to go there and my hope my hope let's go back and switch over here my fond hope is that by tomorrow, I will have had time to go ahead and let this dry, uh, prime it up, and we could potentially start painting tomorrow. If not, we'll definitely be doing the foam sculpting and then maybe some final assembly. Worst case scenario, I do hand priming on stream. We had a car stretch for a bit and it took an hour to get to the grocery store. Thankfully, our grocery store is only a quarter of a mile away, so that's easy for us to walk. Um, it's the other things like part of the reason we moved to this joint in particular is we had friends here and there are some really fun and quirky things in the midtown, downtown area, I guess you could call it, uh, that we've been looking forward to for a long time. It's just they're a little bit too far to walk to. Can we walk to them? Yes. Do we want to walk to them? No, not really. My streams will be, uh, the Monday through Thursday streams will be 2 p.m. Central, always 2 p.m. Central. And then Friday stream will kick off at noon Central. Uh, I don't have that anymore. I need to do that. Could you add that to my to-do list? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, yes, and I think I know the exact one you're talking about, Phoenix, and we need to get out to that uh, Spirit Halloween store very soon because 
if y'all think for one second in the month of October that I am not doing some kind of, you know, Halloween inspired gothic spooky horror build thing, you're sadly mistaken. You just don't know me. Also, I got to plan something for October because of my stream anniversary. Shiza. It's going to be my three year streamer anniversary, which is also my birthday. Shiza. I don't, unfortunately, I don't know if there's a home goods in our area. We used to have one near us in Colorado. What are you doing? What? It's your birthday. And no, it's, <laughs> we're not doing that again. If I play that clip on my birthday stream again, Cypher will murder me. Uh, the difference between walkable in winter versus walkable in other weather is nothing that's got that true. But again, we're used to winter and this joint where we're actually we're at right now gets a milder winter than we did uh, in the Front Range, Colorado. So we'll still get snow and cold and all that stuff, but it will not be on the level of where we're at, which is kind of sad because we do love it. We're those weirdos. We love ice and snow. Yeah, see what Cypher said. She will fucking murder me if I play that clip during my birthday again. <laughs> yeah, less mountain snow. <laughs> also, potentially less sudden blizzard snow dump uh, around Mother's Day, which was always wild. But I think the plan this weekend is, uh, I know the plan this weekend is we're going to get out with a couple of folks, um, actually explore more of the town because we haven't had that chance yet. Um, see what's what I want to personally go to this place's local game shop. Um, Nix has vouched for it and says it's pretty good. I want to go see for myself. Uh, also will be largely dependent on what they have available for my crafting needs on whether or not I'm going to become a steady patron of theirs. Not so much lake effect snow uh, here. We're far enough south that it, it's got to get gnarly before we get any lake effect snow. Again, and hearkening back to what I said at the beginning of stream with people focusing on the negative and, oh, you better be ready for this. Anytime someone says, you know, you better be ready for, for the snow and the cold. And, and it's like, I'm going to stop you right there. I was a child in Alaska. I'm used to it. I will be fine. I promise you. Well, what about the humidity? I grew up uh, for a good stint in Houston, Texas. I will be fine. The only thing I have not experienced at this point in the contiguous United States is an earthquake. That's it. I have literally experienced every other natural disaster that this country has to offer. My favorite season is uh, late autumn and early winter, right right at that cusp. But if I have to pick just one season, it's, it's going to be autumn. Autumn is when both mine and Catherine's birthdays are in. Um, it's uh, technically, well, not even technically, because it's not winter at that point. Uh, autumn is our wedding anniversary. Autumn has some of our favorite holidays. So autumn's really our jam around here. Did Oryx survive the move? No. Oryx did not survive the move, and Oryx was actually gone before the move. Hence the whole joke about a puppet ghost. Uh, there is that potential here. Southern Illinois has had a few small ones. And if so, you know, game on. Then I can, I can mark off that blackout bingo card, I guess. Because I I have experienced everything you can in the continental United States. No, sorry. Let me amend that statement because it has happened here and it happened in 1980. I have not experienced a volcanic eruption in the United States yet. Doesn't mean it won't happen. I love autumn when it cools off from the summer heat, but isn't bone chillingly cold yet. That's always nice. Yeah. Now, I may have experienced an earthquake in Alaska when I was a kid, but I was so young that I don't remember it, so I don't think it counts. Uh, in North Carolina? Yeah, those are always wild when they get them out that way. 
God Zero visit the Pacific Northwest and give him an earthquake. Or if my voice acting friends have their way, one of these days I'll actually end up visiting uh, LA for more than just driving past. Love it when it finally gets cool enough for me to wear my shawls and cardigans and hats. Yes. Would y'all like to hear a terrible hat joke? I saw this one on Blue Sky. It's a terrible hat joke. I'm going to tell you anyway. Did you know that if you flip a canoe over, you can wear it as a hat because it's capsized? I'm going to get... Yep. Flick. <laughs> Um, as far as I'm aware, uh, the last volcanic ex eruption in Alaska was like 1700s. It wasn't my joke. I'm merely the messenger. Not my joke, merely messenger. And I warned y'all, I warned y'all it was a terrible hat joke. So I did not spring it on you unannounced. It's a service I provide. <laughs> you can make your own volcano and set it off. That'll count. I think Catherine might have a small problem with me if I do that. Just a little bit. You sure? We can have a small Krakatoa in the backyard. Uh, the one in Alaska isn't that the one went off uh, half her. Oh, oh, thank you so much, humanity. Uh, fell eight feet. Uh, that was an earthquake. Yeah, half Anchorage, that was an earthquake. That was not an eruption. If I remember correctly. Um, thank you so much for, for the donation. I appreciate it. Yeah, the videos, and that was in the 60s. Um, 50s, 60s. And I still, to this day, remember first seeing those pictures as a kid because they scared the hell out of me. Just seeing half the street <laughs> and this side of the street now almost level with the tops of the buildings on this side of the street. Uh, I gotcha. No, I was talking uh, volcanic eruptions because the, the last... If you don't count the smaller ventings of Mount St. Helens. Uh, the last major eruption that we had in the continental United States was May 1980. Yeah, that's the one. Last eruption was this year now. Was, okay, so they did have one this year. I gotcha. Sorry, I was still on the whole beat of the last, like, major, major, like, volcano explosive index level seven or eight that we had was um, the one that blew its top uh, in Peloponnesia. Yep, May 18th, 1980, just a few months before I was actually born. I'm old, you see. I never claimed to be otherwise. I am old. I may not look it on the outside, Gandalf, but I'm feeling stretched, like too butter spread over too much bread. And it's still on my bucket list uh, to go to Johnston Ridge um, overlooking Mount St. Helens. That's definitely still on my bucket list. I would love to go there and, and see that and see the memorial. Oh, I bet, Reese. <laughs> yes, I said what I said. I feel old in inside, Cypher. Old inside. You always have the yeah we always have the yellowstone caldera to look forward to <laughs> oh that'd be awesome synaptic i was fascinated again because it's my birth year i was fascinated with mount st helens when i was a kid so i have devoured so many books on mount st helens and just the whole catastrophe surrounding it um it's one of those things i definitely since i got so involved in the history of it i want to go see it but then there are like so many places overseas that because I was a student of history, I want to be able to go see, you know, famous battle sites, castles, that sort of thing. <coughs> Hydrate can do. 
I have a fresh LaCroix here. Ah, I got your risk. Ah, the finest in flavor adjacent beverages. But I also want to go see places like Vesuvius. Uh, and everyone goes Pompeii. No, I want to go see Herculaneum. I want to see Herculaneum and that view. Um, especially with uh, the tales and recallings of Pliny the Elder, Pliny the Younger, that sort of thing. Me, I'm huge into meteorology. One of my favorite people to watch on YouTube is a fellow named Pecos Hank. So imagine if you will, and it should be hard to imagine, I'm a bit of a dork. Because I moved around so much, my one go-to in any new school that I ended up in was the library. Because it doesn't matter how they're laid out, it doesn't matter how different the school is, the library always smells and feels the same, right? So a lot of my free time was spent in the library and I devoured books on meteorology and volcanology, uh, history, all that stuff. So let's just say I got really good at things like Trivial Pursuit real quickly. <laughs> That's me with Pompeii, my best friend who's third generation Italian, who wants to go back for a 40th and I want to go to Pompeii. Yeah, definitely if you can. If you can make it out there, 100% go. Not knocking Pompeii. It's just Pompeii was so extensively covered and Herculaneum got its shit stomped. <laughs> and in many ways stomped a lot harder than Pompeii. It's the more interesting site to me. Yep, nerd's gonna nerd. I come by it naturally, y'all. <laughs> Anytime someone rolls through and says, you're really cool, and I'm like, I'm really not. I am really not. I'm really not. If I were wearing my glasses right now, perfection. Ah, I gotta get new glasses, too. We gotta get new bikes. I gotta get new glasses. One thing at a time. Am I right? It was more difficult to ex Yeah, it's definitely more difficult to excavate. But it's uh, it's also just way more fascinating to me because it was just that sucker punch after the fact, you know? I'm not cool. I'm just a dude, but I'm very much a nerd. I appreciate it, though. But yeah, here, that's a good question uh, for those of you in chat. If there was a spot anywhere, anywhere on our globe that you could visit, that you have been dying to see with your own eyes, what would it be? I would love to, I would love to hear that from some of y'all. Just choose one place, one place that you would absolutely love to go see. Uh, don't be fooled by my perceived coolness. I flail like an inflatable noodle. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. Wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man. New Zealand? Oh, good choice. I don't know if I'd want to go to Mata Mata in New Zealand or just go see the Remarkables, the mountain range there. Like, yeah, I would want to see Hobbiton, but also I just kind of want to go over to the Weta workshop and say, Y'all, I just want to look around. <laughs> the Serengeti? Ooh, nice. Glencoe, Scotland? Yep. Iceland, Japan? Uh, there's a specific spot in Japan that I've always wanted to go see. And that is the place where the Battle of Sekigahara took place. I would love to see that someday. Let's see, where would I want to go? If it was just one place, I get one shot. Do not miss your chance to flow. Um, hmm. Hmm. I can't remember the exact location of this place, but it's, that's it. Uh, Sutton Who. Sutton Hoo in England. Um, the the archaeological dig should still be there. And if not Sutton Hoo, uh, then there's another place. And this is the place I cannot remember the name of in Norway. 
uh, where some of the first um, Norse rune stones were discovered. I would love to see that. Absolutely love to see that. The Great Barrier Reef, nice. Every place I want to go is inaccessible. I love strange landscapes. I mean, that's fair. Yeah, right. That's it's hard just choosing one. I've got four places on my bucket list, but I would love to go to the International Taekwondo Federation headquarters. Ooh, nice. Yeah, Catherine and I's first planned trip over that way is going to be Finland because we have a friend who lives there. And there's uh, some wonderful, wonderful Norse stuff that they will be showing us. Norway, Denmark, see the history around uh, Viking culture. So one thing I want to address. Hey, DC, welcome in. Um, and this is going to sound weird, but this is one of those things I like to dispel. There is no such thing as Viking culture. Okay. Um, there is Norse culture. There is Dane culture. Um, there is the Kiev Rus culture. Viking is not a culture. Viking is a term. It is something you did. So just putting that out there. There is no such thing as Viking culture anything any more than there is a collective shoe maker culture. Viking is is a term. It is an action and it is also a term for someone performing that action. Uh, Ireland. Ooh, good choice. Time between Barcelona and Tokyo. Ooh, Barcelona would be rad. Hey, no worries whatsoever. It's it's something that I've uh, started not trying to necessarily come down on people on, but it's just like, hey, little little aside, Vikings not a culture. Hey, Nimble Crow, welcome on in. Glad to see you. We're just we're kind of just shooting the shit and filling out the time on the rest of the stream with you know if there was one place that you would like to go on this planet, bucket list item, where would that be? Valheiming? Uh, not to my knowledge, but I will definitely double check on that one. Bless you. Oh, Blarney Castle would be a lot of fun. Stretch. Can do. Barcelona would be on top of my list. Venice would be there, but when I went, it was five and I actually remember it. Oh, that's fucking cool. I'm weird. Um, if I had to visit any place in Italy, um, it would be, uh, Florence. It'd be Florence, uh, formerly Firenze. And if not Florence, then I would want to visit the Northern, uh, portion of Italy near the Alps, uh, because they still have it marked off the route that Hannibal took when he, uh, came storming through with the rest of his Gaul so uh, soldiers. I want to go to the Maasai Maran in Kenya. Ooh, what is that? And I want to see the... Yeah, I want to see the Aurora Borealis again. I have not seen it since I was a kid. What? Do tell. I'm curious. What is that, Nibble Crow? Got a dose of hyperfixation. I've been fleshing out some NPCs for my Dragonborn Div Wiz Arcana Cleric. Brains are weird. I... Psh. Mood. Oh, yeah, for sure, Reese. For anyone who likes fossils, I always recommend uh, Lime Bridges on the British South Coast. Uh, would that be on the South Coast? Would that be near the limestone cliffs? Just curious. The birthplace of paleontology with Mary. Okay, that's cool. I'd go there just for the museum. For Italy, I would do Naples. Uh, family on my dad's side were from there, and I would love to find out more. Nice. Did you see any of the meteor shower? We did not. Alas, we have too much light pollution. So one of the things we're hoping to do next year, uh, if we can save up for a vehicle, is we're going to drive out past the light uh, pollution and watch the Perseids. If I had to make a choice, I'd either be between the uh, Holocaust sites to feel the energy around them, or to Hiroshima and Nagasaki to see what Oppenheimer meant when he later quoted the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, yeah, but also 
very touchy subject. And I'm always torn on those between the need to see it and understand it and then the need to be respectful and not approach it like a tourist so um yeah that's that's why those have never made my bucket list in particular uh the masai mara is a nature reserve it's supposed to be a great place for spotting wild big cats the old tv series big cat diary was filmed oh okay the famous white cliffs of dover on the other end of the south coast all right i got you I didn't know how how far those limestone cliffs extended. So. <laughs> Who is messaging me? How dare! How dare! How dare! As I'm speaking and geeking out my friends. Um, trying to think. There was another joint that was very, very, very high on my list. I wouldn't mind going to Chicxulub, uh, Yucatan, even though the humidity would probably kill me. But if only, if only to see the ongoing research there they have on the Chicxulub crater, I think that'd be pretty cool. Oh, that'd be fun, Reese. Uh, from a local perspective, I would love to go to Montauk Point here on Long Island. I've never been and have only been to Fire Island. Lighthouses are rad. Lighthouses are rad. No joke. Lighthouses are rad. Ah, I got you, Steph. Also, New Orleans. Always wanted to go. Yes, I can tell you. First day experience. If you ever get the chance to go to New Orleans, go. Go at least once. Not during a Mardi Gras. Just, just go off season. Go to New Orleans. Leave Mardi Gras for the tourists. Go and experience the different quarters when they're in their life and in their prime outside of Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras is wonderful. Don't get me wrong, but it's performative. It's, it's the spectacle that's been that's put on for the outsiders. No. You want the true essence of Nolens. You you go in the off season. Uh, fuck it. Go in the winter. Go in the winter. It's not going to be cold. I can tell you that. Get chilly. It's not going to be cold. But yeah. All right. I like beads, but no. <laughs> I would like to go to New Orleans again. Uh, first time I ever went was for a, a Christian outreach. I want new perspective. Yeah, definitely. Or to Savannah because of haunted locations. Fair. Uh, I mean, I'm going to go for a place that is supposedly haunted, though. It's got to be Winchester House. I just want to see Winchester House to see Winchester House. But if I'm going to go on haunt reputation alone, it's going to be the Winchester Mystery House. Uh, I was in West Hollywood for Halloween a few years and that has far been my most impressive Halloween experience ever. The costumes, right? Uh, Lime Ridges is also part of what we call the Jurassic Coast. You can walk through time from one end to the other. Oh, that's right. I've heard about this. I've heard about this. Uh, when it was still called the KT Boundary, uh, that's one of the, the first places they discovered that boundary. Um, and w near where we used to live in Colorado, because fun fact Colorado used to be at the bottom of a fucking ocean um there's a place called the dome of history which is this great massive dome rock that has been pried up just by tectonics over billions of years right uh, but it's also sedimentary and it too has that KT boundary and I know that's one of the spots that was checked uh during the earliest uh, eras of uh, this theory about, you know, what killed the dinosaurs, they checked it and were able to find that same uh, meteor particulate matter in Colorado as they did in uh, the Chicxulub uh, crater uh, on the southern coast of England. It's fascinating stuff. Uh, Julia, President. Oh, wow. 
Uh, my sister and I went to a con in New Orleans right around Halloween. We actually did schedule some time to see some of the quarters while we were there. Nice. We did a ghost tour down in Charles and one of the ghosts described as an attractive young man in this one hotel room that likes to get into bed and snuggle, uh, but only with single women and only with their consent. And I would like to go back to Charles for reasons. I mean, hey. I'm just saying. Oh, no, Lorna. If you ever come out to Milwaukee, Shaker Cigar Bar was haunted, uh, has haunted Lord Tours. And it was used by Al Capone and was a bordello. Oh, nice. That could be fun. I always love learning about haunted history. I guess the other biggest thing for me is like any of the locations I want to go visit either have um, historical significance in and of themselves or are areas that I know if I avoid the most trafficked areas, the most touristy spots, I'm going to find really cool shit, like really cool shit. That's why Catherine and I were talking about if we ever manage to make it over to France. Uh, we may spend a day or two in Paris, but that's not why we're going. There's all manner of other shit that we want to see in France. My favorite fact is how Appalachia connects to the mountains and I think Norway. Yep. It's also a serial killer walking tour because Dahmer. Oof. Well, I mean, that's why I want to go to Whitechapel in London. It's Jack the Ripper. And Scotland, yep. Uh, also, I don't know if this has been mentioned in stream yet, but Duncan released their pumpkin. Oh, <laughs> we found pumpkin spice creamer. That was one of the first things we found uh, when we got here. Walmart came out with it early and we're like, yes, please. Thank you very much. We'll take that. We were very, very happy to find that. Also, also, as a reminder, if you don't like pumpkin spice, no worries whatsoever. I don't judge. However, I will absolutely fucking judge you harshly if you're one of those individuals who immediately yucks the yum of other people. Let's not tear each other up. Well, let me rephrase this. The world is on literal fire. All right. Shit is not sanguine. Let us not tear each other down over a fucking flavor. Okay. Okay. Uh, we are 40 to 50 minutes from uh, Adelhampton and one of the most haunted places in the United Kingdom. That's rad. Hoping to walk the length of Hadrian's Wall next year. Oh, that would be cool. Hell yeah. So it shall be written, so it shall be done pretty artificial. It's every year, and I'm just like, no, we're not doing that this year. And if you're doing it, I, I'm going to block or mute. Just, I can't anymore. Shit is so foul. So getting irrationally angry or snippy with people for enjoying pumpkin spice or being excited over Halloween decorations being out early, it's like, no, we're not doing that. We're not. There's so much else on our plates that is chock full of vitamin suck that we're we're not we're not adding on to it we're good i have never tried pumpkin spice yet it's just a blend uh the same blend of spices you would find in a pumpkin pie if you've ever if you've ever had a pumpkin pie you've had pumpkin spice hellscape at uh forte 100 plus degrees yeah i'm feeling real bad for my family that's still down in texas right now because they are getting romped with triple digits and a drought and i do not envy them i look forward to potentially seeing the northern lights being so far north now hell yes reese from what i hear the home goods halloween decor is very nice this year yeah uh steph had mentioned that unfortunately i don't think there's a home goods near us there was one while we were still in Colorado, where we lived in Colorado. Uh, here, we don't know yet. We haven't been able to get out and look around. 
we replaced our utensil holder and fruit basket with Halloween ones because you can't absolutely listen, y'all. Every year we go shopping for Halloween decor, uh, or as we like to call it, decor, because it's a lot of it's up year round. The only stuff we bring out, uh, and we do it um, for uh, Hobbit Day. Um, we bring out the specifically autumn decorations, our leaves and, and stuff like that. Um, but everything else, as far as the let's get macabre, that stays out year round because Catherine and I are those people. TM. There's a home goods near Walmart. Okay, we'll have to go check it out if we can. Unfortunately, pumpkin pie has not arrived here yet. Damn. Not even um, like pumpkin pasties. I mean, it would it would make sense, but at the same time, I'm like, there's been enough time for cultivation of baked goods across the pond, you would think. One is opening about 10 minutes from me. The other was 25 to 3 minutes. Of, yeah, so far, we've only seen what Joanne's had put out before we moved. And Michael's, again, the one in Colorado, um, was just starting to put stuff out. So we really haven't checked that out yet either. But in our defense, we've been fucking busy and buried in cardboard. Uh, where I am in the UK, about 30 minutes from the Avebury Stone Circle. Rad. There's also a pub in Avebury that was one of the most haunted and so one of the most one of the supposed resting places of King Arthur uh, and is one of the largest barrel mounts in the UK. That's cool. I like that. Yeah, Hobbit Day. We do Hobbit Day. So we do Hobbit Day every September. Uh, it's basically the fictional birthday for Bilbo Baggins and Frodo Baggins. They share a birthday. Um, and we have a little Hobbit feast. And that's how we kick off autumn is with a uh, Hobbit Day. It's what we do here. Uh, between the skeletons of the Christmas tree I haven't taken down in several years. My apartment has permanent nightmare before Christmas vibe to it. I kind of dig that. Uh, I'd seen a video where some folks in the UK had tried pecan pie for the first time and were like, Americans have been holding out on us. I mean, it's true, especially for people who really like pecan pie. When I finally get to Scotland, my American stepmom has promised me, yes, oh, Lorna, Lorna, on baked goods, our candy sucks. Don't get me wrong. Uh, but as far as baked goods are concerned, you're in for a treat. I said what I said. If you've tried candy, particularly chocolate, outside of the United States, you know, our candy sucks by comparison. I need to put up my girl in his decor. Do it up. Oh, it is top of the hour, which means we need to wrap up here uh, for too much longer. I'm going to start looking for my other monitor is actually caddy cornered here. Now I'm going to start looking for someone to read into y'all hang tight. See who we can play with. Oh, uh, we got a few choices. I think, though, um, well, let's see how long they've been on before I do this. And yeah, they've been on for a while. All right. All right. We are going to be raiding into Stephen Joyce, who is playing. I'm not sure, but it's cute as uh, it's Steven. So, of course, it's going to be cute. Sweet potato pie, key lime pie. If you like limes, you'll like key lime pie. Catherine loves key lime pie. It's not my jam. So that is my raid call. Feel free to use the uh, that or other emotes if you are not sub for whatever reason. We are going to get this raid underway. Make sure when you pop in to click that live gig twice. And uh, do follow and toss Steven a sub if you can. Uh, my next stream is going to be tomorrow. And it's good to be back. Thanks so much, Sarah. My next stream is going to be tomorrow, 2 p.m. Central. We're going to be continuing work on this build for Die Hard Dice. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. Self-care is important. Strength, not a weakness. You are doing better than you're probably giving yourself credit for. You are not a critical failure. And I, for one, am grateful you are still here and you spent a few geeky hours with me today. So until next time, please take care of yourselves. And horns up. <laughs>